Uh, analyzing a situation where the sun's mass is reduced by 50 percent to see what effects uh, would take place on the orbit of the Earth. Specifically, how does the speed of Earth's orbit change? How does the radius of Earth's orbit change? And we'll assume that Earth's orbit is circular. It's a, we're approximating a little bit, but this is a combination of uh, centripetal force and angular momentum. So the, uh, we'll say that the Earth moves around the Sun in a circle and that the force of gravity supplies the centripetal force. That being the case, the law of gravity, capital G, the universal constant, mass of the Sun, mass of the Earth, divided by the square of the uh, radius of Earth's orbit, equals on this side the centripetal force. It's the Earth that's moving around the circle. So mv squared over r would be our relationship. And of course we can simplify this. The mass of the Earth drops out on both sides and one factor of r can be canceled on both sides. And I'm going to uh, leave g m sub s on one side and write v squared r over here. Now while we have the mass of the Sun as it is, let's say we have some starting velocity and a starting radius, V1 and, and R1. If we change the mass of the Sun by a factor of 2, make it 50% smaller, then I would only have 0 0.5 G M sub S. The M sub S is, uh, I'm not going to bother recalculating, I'm going to leave it in symbols because these symbols are going to cancel, so I'm not going to put in numbers. And this would be V2 squared R2. Um, you know, up here, we, I could start fresh, but I don't think I need to do that for you. If we would have G.05 mass of the sun, mass of the earth, R2 squared, R two squared and mass of the earth, uh, V2 squared divided by R2, right, we'd come up to this. So we've got that relationship. Now, there are two unknowns here. Um, the velocity and the radius. Now let's consider the angular momentum. The angular momentum can be calculated with the mass of the object, the velocity of the object, the radius of the circle for the object, and this will be a constant. It'll be a constant. We don't have any force on the Earth in the direction of motion, um, so we're going to have a constant for that value. Now, if we label this a 1 and a 1 here, I can actually, I'm going to divide the mass into the constant just to simplify things just a little bit. So we have velocity times radius uh, as a constant. And then when we go out to the uh, second condition, V2 and R2, what do you think we'll have for the multiplication of those two? And if we would uh, go into the second situation where the sun's mass has been reduced by 50%, then we would have V2 R2 equals the same constant. And again, I'm taking kind of a shortcut. It's mass of the Earth, velocity, radius, multiplied together, give us a constant. Um, but if we... Um, have a situation where there's no torque on the Earth, no external torque, then the angular momentum is conserved. And that will be the case if just suddenly we hypothetically take away 50% of the Sun's mass. And so MVR is a constant. The V and the R's are going to be changing, uh, but the multiplication together will be a constant. Let's see how we can take advantage of this. So I'm going to work over here and I'm going to divide these two equations and I'm actually going to do um, this equation divided by the one above it so I can save a little space here so we'd have the V1 squared R1 on the bottom and here G M sub S mass of the Sun and I'm dividing one equation by another, that's perfectly legal. If I have A equals B and C equals D, then it's true that A over C is equal to B over D. 
you can divide equations. You can divide equalities and come up with another equality. So I had these two separate equations for the V1 R1 case, the V2 R2 case, and I've divided them, leaving this in the numerator. And dividing now, we get some cancellations. The G, capital G in the mass, M sub S, we don't have to look those up. Um, over here, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to take this equation and divide it by this one. So I'd have V1 R1 here and constant. So one equation, another equation. I'm dividing this equation by the uh, V1 R1 equation. And now the constant cancels off, leaves us with a factor of 1. So if I would solve this for R2, and then I'm going to substitute in over here. So if I solve this for R2, I get V1 R1 over V2. V2 R2 over V1 R1 equals 1. So I'll multiply both sides by V1 R1, divide both sides by V2. And now let's come back. I'm going to use that as a substitution into this equation. And I have uh, 0 0.5 on the left equals V2 squared. For R2, I put in V1 R1 over V2. And on the bottom, we have V1 squared R1. So how can this be simplified a little bit? Well, I have a factor of V2 in a numerator position, one in the denominator here. So one factor of V2 cancels. I've got R1 in the numerator, R1 in the denominator. That cancels. I've got a V1 in the numerator, a V1 factor in the denominator. So one factor there cancels. And we find that 0 0.5 equals V2 over V1. Or if I multiply both sides by V1, we find that the new velocity of the Earth in its new orbit will be half of the original velocity. And now let's make use of this up in uh, our calculation of the new orbit radius. So R2 is equal to V1 over V2 times R1. Now you have to do a little mental uh, uh, arithmetic here, perhaps. Um, if we're going to put, I'll, I'll just go ahead and put V2 in here. I'll, make, I'll do this substitution. So we'll, we'll get back to this. I'll solve for this in a minute. But R2 equals V1 R1. And in place of V2, I'm going to put in 0 0.5 V1. The V1s cancel. And R1 divided by a half is 2 R1. So the new speed in our orbit is half of the old speed. The new radius is twice the original radius. And you could play around this with other uh, changes in the mass of the sun. Uh, so your kind of variable parameter here for different situations would be how much of the sun is left, how much of the mass of the sun is left. In this case, it was 0.5 was left. Uh, so you can speculate what would happen to the Earth's orbit if 90% uh, of the mass is gone. Then this would be 0.1 uh, times m sub s. And work that through and see what happens. So that's uh, thinking about gravitational force creates centripetal force. Angular momentum is a constant as long as there's no net external torque in the situation. So think about that. Perhaps ask your instructor some questions but we get some changes in the uh, motion of the Earth around this new sun.